one of the things I noticed is, uh, I'd say particularly with Martin, is he brings in expectations of what a man is. He sees himself as not fitting the bill in terms of what a man is, and that produces some anxiety and some insecurity. Because it's a man thing, baby. I mean, you really wouldn't understand, you know? I don't want no other brother loaning my girl money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, if you need money, I'm the man. You come to me, baby. But there were also other things at play, too, including each one of their vision for what a relationship was supposed to be, um, and also the pressure of Martin's friends, thinking that, you know, uh, Martin was too whipped by Gina, or too at her beck and call, or too, you know, attentive to her, and that that was somehow a commentary on his manhood. I'm gonna prove it to you with the Stan Winters, are you whipped test. Oh. <laughs> what else? When she talks to you, do you ever find yourself listening? Do you hold her after making love to her? Martin, I don't need to go no further. You are so whipped, I could spread you on my sandwich. Martin's already feeling sort of on the edge about this is what it's like to be a man. He has a very strong aversion to being whipped and Tommy and Cole instigate. So they are supportive, but they also instigate and say, oh, you know, your house used to be a man cave. Straight up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, like your pad, right? Used to smell like a man's pad, you know. <laughs> See? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh... <laughs> Corn chips and stuff like that, you know, you know. But now it just smell like potpourri up in here, man. <laughs> Yo, man, Gina put that in here. You know, things like that, that and still some uh, doubt into his mind. All of that thinking may be exacerbated by what's going on with Martin and Gina, the education issue. Oh.